I'm going to start off by saying good morning to everyone. It is good to see everyone this morning. Good morning, Council Member Ann. Although I can't really see you because I forgot to bring my glasses. <laughs> step away at a moment to get my glasses. Uh, but it is good to at least think I see you. Uh, <laughs> uh, good morning, Mr. Bromwich. I see you have your coffee this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Bless about it. Bless. It's always good to know that you have waken up and you see a new day, a new mm -hmm. day. And so to those who do not know, I am your Detroit City Council President, Brenda Jones, and today is September 11th. And I'd like to just begin with a moment of silence in memory of those yeah. who lost their lives on September 11th. 2001. If we can have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here with you today and to be here with my colleague, um, Council Member Janae Ayers, and she is my colleague at large. Um, I, along with Council Member Ayers, are strong advocates for city departments supporting Detroit's small business, um, small businesses with contracting opportunities. Today, the Small Business Empowerment Fair is then held in conjunction with Detroit Bid Week. And again, we are live on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Brenda Jones. Boise Jackson and Tony Stewart Limit will give us an overview of Detroit Bid Week and the Equity Council. But first, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, member Ayers, who would give her opening comments. Take it all over, right. member Ayers. All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you all for being here. And for those that have called in, thank you all for wanting to participate. Uh, as Council President stated, she and I have a, a vested interest in, obviously, the city of Detroit and especially our small businesses. Um, this city does not function if you are not a part of it. And so what we would like to do is make sure that we continue on having these type of forums so that you can become engaged, become a city vendor, understand how this works. And honestly, doing it this way allows us to kind of remove some of the layers of bureaucracy that sometimes frustrates people uh, when you start thinking about how do I get my business up and running? How do I become a part of uh, the ability to bid on city of Detroit projects? And so I uh, always want to go and give Tony and, and Boise a huge shout out because they are always here for us um, and willing to help us. Also, Lily from DGC um, and particularly our both council president and, and my team, our staffs, they are amazing. So let's get this thing started. I just wanted to start off by thanking you all. So we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. Thank you, council member Ian. Uh, Mr. Jackson and Ms. Stuart Limit, please tell us about the Detroit Bid Week and the Equity Council. Good morning, Council President, and good morning, Mary Hamill, who's joined us for today. Uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, our Chief Procurement Officer, will be on shortly. But I wanted to make um, a little bit of time to tell you about the Detroit Bid Week. We are so excited to host our first Detroit Bid Week where we set aside bid opportunities for Detroit certified businesses. This is an, an initiative um, from our Detroit Procurement Equity Council, which many of the leaders of that Equity Council are here on this call today. And so what our goal is on the Procurement Equity Council is to make sure that we have inclusion of Detroit businesses in our bids. We've taken several steps to make sure that we have um, 
increased opportunity. We have made sure that we um, took away some of the barriers that some of the small Detroit businesses have had. Um, some of the changes that we have implemented are, we have consolidated our affidavits. We have continued to put out multi-contracting projects where in the past, one company that was a large company had the bid. We've worked with our department heads and the department leaders to make sure that we've broken them down so that we can have multiple contracts so many people in the city of Detroit can um, have opportunities for those. And with doing that, there are more Detroiters. We have also implemented working with Detroit um, at Works so that we can assist our um, companies with hiring Detroiters as well. And so Detroit Bid Week gives them an opportunity to bid on all of the opportunities that our departments have on a reoccurring basis, but just for them. All right. Thank you, um, Ms. Tony Stewart Bennett. I, I'm tr still trying to, as you see, scorching, trying to see. Before I introduce our uh, department presenters, I'm going to, in advance, ask you all to excuse my early departure. Um, I will be giving remarks at the 911 memorial service at campus marches at 11 a.m. And so I am going to I'm be leaving um, a little early. At, and so I'm asking in advance to excuse my uh, leaving. Um, we are joined by the following to talk about Detroit bid opportunities. We have Tyrone Clifton from Detroit Building Authority. Good morning. We have Palencia Mobley, Detroit Water and Search Department. Good morning. We have Rand Bromlich, Department of Public Works. Good morning, Mr. Bromlich. Morning, Council President. Okay. And um, we will have our first caller question and answer after. Let me say that again. We'll have our first caller on the question and answers after their presentation and the Creole presentation. So I am going to begin with um, Tyrone Clifton and following him will be Palencia Mobley and following him will be Ron Bromlich. And again, I will be leaving early and turning you over into some very good, 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 good hands um, who are already here with us. Uh, the great hands of my other at large council member will, I think, continue to be here with you. Council member Ayers and my office, Linda Wesley, will continue to be here um, with you. I'm not leaving you all because I don't love you because you know I love you. I'm leaving you because duty calls for 911. Um, so, if you will begin with us, um, Mr. Clifton. Thank you, Council President. Good morning. Good morning, Council Person Ayers. It's good to be here. Thank you for the invite, too. I really appreciate it. Um, the DBA was created in 1972 under an authority act during the uh, administration of uh, our esteemed mayor. The DBA is a component of the city of Detroit. And what we do exactly is we do large scale capital projects. Now those capital projects can range from $300,000 uh, or less to multiple millions of dollars like the public safety headquarters is a good example, which was a $50 million project all in. Um, but with that, we also like to provide opportunities with Detroit-based businesses, Detroit headquartered businesses through our RFQs, our RFPs, and our bids. We partner with the City of Detroit Office of Contracting and Procurement. We follow the same policies and procedures that the OCP has established, uh, which are very good, and we really appreciate their assistance in our bidding. Uh, we're also a member of their uh, bidding equity 
Council, so we are in lockstep with making sure that we find opportunities for Detroit-based, Detroit-headquartered businesses, and quite frankly, Detroiters getting jobs and working in our construction field as skilled uh, laborers, operators, uh, electricians, plumbers, et cetera. So that's very important to us. The DBA is go governed by a five-member board of which two members are appointed by city, city council. One member is a joint appointment by the mayor and the city council, and the um, um, other two members are uh, appointment from the mayor, and um, the mayor is by default chairman of the DBA, which at this point in time is Mr. Akeem Berry, chief operating officer. Um, so with that, that's another oversight to make sure that we stay in lockstep with the city and the city's goals and objectives with giving opportunities for Detroit-based, Detroit minorities, uh, Detroit headquarter businesses. It's very important to us. Some upcoming projects that are key um, that will provide opportunities for Detroiters range in different um, in costs. So we do have uh, uh, renovation and improvements to Hart Plaza. Um, that's pursuant to city council approval, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, have $2.9 million. That's a very important project. Um, a lot of people will see that. And it's an opportunity to make some needed repairs to the Hart Plaza surface. Um, we have DDOT Rosa Parks. Uh, we wanna do a build out for DDOT that would allow for um, their security and their um, dispatch to be located at that facility. And this is important because that's a three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar project. That's an opportunity for some other companies to get in, to get into what we do at the DBA, understand construction and, and uh, grow their business. Um, also, we have another smaller project that's very important, three hundred thousand dollars for the health department as we build out some locations, they're getting new health department rigs, and it's important that we store those rigs properly and provide data and power for that. It's, that's another important thing, especially given what's going on with uh, the coronavirus and other things coming up. And health department able to take those rigs and go to the community versus the community coming to 100 MAC, their new location. And also we have a small project that uh, pursuant to the city council approval, $300,000 at the root range where the police department um, maintain their certification. So those are projects that are coming our way that we would like to get out to the public and create opportunities. Uh, and again, we're in lockstep with the city. We're in lockstep with OCP and their procurement policies. We work closely with CREO to make sure that we meet those 51% goals on our projects. Um, so we just wanna keep that synergy, we wanna keep those good projects uh, and going forward. And of course, I'll be here for, for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrone. <clears throat> oh, there you are, Council President, you got your sexy specs. You can see me now. <laughs> Ms. Mobley. Good morning, everyone. My name is Palencia Mobley, and I am the Deputy Director and Chief Engineer for the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. Many of you um, are familiar with DWSD as one large entity responsible for operating wa water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants, but we're no longer in that business. The Great Lakes Water Authority has all responsibility for the water treatment plants and the wastewater treatment plants. And so varying projects that may be a Great Lakes Water Authority project, they bid out on a software platform called Bonfire. And so I invite anyone who's on this call to take a look at Bonfire um, and register for Bonfire so you can see what opportunities they have there. They will also have smaller contracting opportunities associated with facility related work. Uh, they may have plumbing work at some of the facilities uh, and things of that nature. So don't uh, just look at DWSD, also take a look at Great Lakes Water Authority because they will have much more plentiful opportunities just because of the vast number of facilities and equipment that they are responsible for. So DWSD now is responsible for primarily three things, I'll say four, uh, collecting money uh, from ratepayers, maintaining the water distribution system, 
uh, in the sewer collection system. And we're also responsible for implementing green stormwater infrastructure throughout the city of Detroit. Fancy way of saying using plants to soak up stormwater and rainwater. So with that in mind, the pr prospective services that we require consulting and contracting on range from design opportunities to construction opportunities and sometimes construction inspections. Uh, and so right now you will see that uh, we bid our projects on Mitten. Um, and I'm gonna say the website backwards because I always do. Uh, I'm gonna try to get it right and I'll, I'll, I'll get it right before the end of the call, but it's biddirect.net slash Mitten. Uh, where all of our opportunities are. And so we, right now, um, we'll have a few things coming out. One will be a design services contract for design of water main. Uh, we will have some sewer improvement contracts coming out. One for the Riverdale neighborhood, one for the Rosedale neighborhood. Not to be confused with North Rosedale Park. Um, I've had to learn that you know, it's not South Rosedale, it's just Rosedale south of Grand River. Uh, we will also have a, a contract for inspection and sewer ser services in the city of Detroit for rehab and replacement forthcoming. We begun to do something different uh, with our capital improvement program, meaning that we assess the condition of infrastructure prior to developing our design contracts uh, and, and developing our designs and determining what's gonna be replaced. Uh, and so we will have a sewer condition assessment contract coming forth for West Village, uh, Southwest Detroit and the neighborhood called Michigan Martin. Now let me back up for a second. Everything DWSD is doing now is similar to what happens uh, in some of the other municipalities locally. Typically municipalities bid out uh, uh, water main replacement and sewer work uh, in a neighborhood, right? So that they know that they have completed the infrastructure services required in a neighborhood. In the past, DWSD was always trying to fix what was wrong, what was the most wrong all across the city. That doesn't allow you to capitalize on economies of scale. So now we're focused specifically on neighborhoods. Um, and we do a lot of analysis to figure out where we're going to assess infrastructure or do condition assessments first. And from those condition assessments, we find out what needs to be replaced or what needs to be re rehabilitated. So you'll begin to see most of our, our projects used to just be advertised as water main replacement. Now you'll see it's water main replacement for Rosedale Park or water main replacement for, um, uh, I, I'm, I don't know, Martindale, whatever. Uh, so that's one thing. We'll also have some other contracts coming forth from the operational group related to some tree removal, potentially some inspection services, and some closed caption television services. Um, we do have a small green infrastructure project coming that's going to be done in conjunction uh, with Detroit Public Schools Community District at the campuses of Charles H. Wright slash the school is gonna become Communication Media Arts uh, over on Bird Road. It's one of our smaller projects. Um, it's, it'll be, you know, not a big project. Um, it's not the typical seven, eight, nine, ten million dollar projects you see us put out. Um, we do have an, a very large project coming uh, that we're calling the West Warren neighborhood um, and that's going to be a large sewer separation project in which we're putting in storm sewer in a uh, 200 and something acre portion of the very far west side, like the southernmost part of the city on the far west side, west of Rouge Park. Um, and these are projects we have to do to remain compliant with our permitting. In addition, a lot of our facilities work uh, is led by the DBA. Uh, so varying projects we have that are facilities related, um, those contracting opportunities are bid out via the DBA. And so Tyrone can let you know uh, what we have forthcoming. I don't know that we have a ton forthcoming um, because we're in the middle of an elevator project and a uh, large roofing project. But 
these opportunities are important because even if it's not something you do, it is critical for you to meet other contractors, know what their scope of services is, the type of work that they can provide, so you can either joint venture or mentor venture with them uh, to become a part of a project team. Tyrone, do you have anything to add? Thank you, Palencia. Um, again, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Tyrone Clifton, I'm the director of the Detroit Building Authority. Um, so the DDA does do capital work for the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. It's very important that everyone realize that. Um, and like Palencia stated, those are gonna be smaller projects uh, pursuant to um, you know, direction of the D DWSD. Those type of projects are uh, renovations and build out in the main office building or the water board building, which is downtown, which is important because those projects could be as low as uh, $75,000 or as high as $200,000. But those are opportunities for contractors and Detroiters too. And similar to DWSD, we put our work on Mitten also, um, and that is the bidnet.net uh, website. So that's very important. Everything posted. Um, and we also pick up the phone and call vendors. So we need to know other vendors who are out there to make sure you have opportunities too, because we're always looking for contractors. That, that's very important, especially new contractors to get a, a foothold and opportunity. Thank you, Tyrone. One last thing I want to mention is that DWSD is working on a partnership with DPSCD right now uh, to pilot what we would call our field services technician, that's the very entry level work that we do. But when we start piloting that um, and being able to get work, uh, potential entry level employees through that vocational program, that also opens up opportunities for contractors because uh, a lot of the high school students that come out of the Randolph vocational program have uh, experience operating mini excavators, um, and bulldozers and things of that nature and actually have some of the mechanical aptitude and abilities. So when you're looking to hire Detroiters, don't overlook the Randolph Vocational School and programming that they have there. Um, so we hope to continue to develop uh, laborers uh, that can do water main replacement and sewer uh, lighting work. A lot of our work is not specialized. Um, it's a lot of general labor. So thank you. Uh, and if there are any questions, uh, you know, obviously direct them back to the procurement team and they will get them to us as directors. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of procurement, I do want to acknowledge Boise Jackson, who has joined us. Good morning to you, Mr. Jackson. Good morning, President Jones. All right. I am going to now turn the floor over to Mr. Bromwich, and I'm sure I'm going to have to leave while he is speaking. And again, um, everyone have a good weekend. Everyone also, I have to say this, remember to stay safe. Um, don't forget to wear your mask. It is so important that when you're out, you have your mask on. And don't forget to keep your hand sanitizer with you as you're about to put your hand in your face. Please use that hand sanitizer before you stick your hands in your face. All righty. Thank you. And Mr. Bromlich, and thank you for um, being here again with us. And member heirs, I know, I know what member heirs can do. So you are in very capable hands. Thank you again, Mr. Um, Bromlich. All right. Thank you again, Council President. Uh, my name is Ron Brendich. I'm director of the Department of Public Works. Um, uh, our department has four operating uh, divisions. Uh, our solid waste division that's responsible for uh, managing the trash collection contractors, advanced disposal, and GFL that provide uh, weekly scheduled uh, collections uh, throughout the entire city. Uh, that division is also responsible for uh, clearing illegal dump sites uh, as well as uh, our residential street sweeping program. Uh, our traffic engineering division uh, is responsible for everything traffic related, uh, and that'll include um, uh, the, the installation and maintenance of our traffic control signs, traffic control signals. Uh, that division also uh, is directly involved in our extremely popular uh, speed cushion uh, uh, project, uh, speed cushion program. And I'm just going to talk a little bit uh, later about um, our plans for expanding that program uh, in 2021 and how there might be additional contractual opportunities 
uh, for Detroit businesses uh, beginning next year. Uh, we also have our city engineering division uh, that's responsible for managing all major construction, road construction projects throughout the city. So all of the major road paving work, the resurfacing work, uh, bridge projects that you see occurring throughout the construction season, uh, those are all managed by DPW's uh, city engineering division. And of course, uh, the bulk of that work is done uh, by, by contractors that we hire. Uh, and one of the things that we've started doing this year, and it's been very successful, uh, is that we've really been putting a lot of focus on uh, having some of our more traditional larger contract contractors kind of uh, reach out and partner uh, with Detroit-based companies uh, that are just, you know, getting into the business. And, and, and like I said, it's been extremely successful this year in terms of helping develop uh, some smaller Detroit-based companies, and we're looking to expand of those programs uh, moving forward starting next year. Uh, our last division is our, our, our street maintenance division uh, that's responsible for all residential road paving, uh, pothole repairs, uh, as well as snow and ice removal uh, during the winter months. And that's just kind of a lead in. I think the one contract uh, that I, the potential con contract opportunity that I'd like to talk about today because uh, it's a contract that's going to be, if it hasn't been already, it's going to be advertised uh, during Detroit Bid Week. Our emergency snow contracts uh, that are uh, that uh, we're going to be awarding hopefully within the next month or so. Uh, and unfortunately, no one likes to talk about, you know, the reality that the winter season is uh, is going to be approaching us. But uh, we want to make sure that we're prepared. So uh, one of the things that we do here in DPW is that we utilize city staff. Uh, for clearing uh, major roads uh, by, by either salting us or, or plowing, depending on the volume of snow uh, that we receive. But when we have a major snow snowstorm, and, uh, and that's defined by typically by snowfall amounts of at least six inches, uh, we'll also perform additional work that we don't perform uh, for the more smaller snow events. Uh, and, and that includes going into residential neighbor, neighborhoods and plowing residential streets, uh, as well as uh, loading and hauling snow uh, from the downtown area. Uh, and, and we utilize contractors for, our res for, for both of those programs, uh, but for the residential uh, plowing contracts, uh, we generally award, we separate those contracts into seven uh, contracts and they're, they're separated geographically by the city council districts. Uh, and we would ideally like to award uh, as many as seven individual contracts to, to seven different firms to provide uh, those residential snow plowing activities. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, in the last few years that uh, we have had uh, a few uh, Detroit-based companies that, uh, that we've been able to award contracts to, uh, but there's definitely an opportunity to expand uh, the capacity of, of contracts being awarded to Detroit companies. And, uh, the work that's required under those contracts, as you can imagine, uh, is, is plowing residential streets. And we require those contractors uh, to, to plow a 16-foot uh, path down the center uh, of the residential streets uh, in the, in the uh, particular council district uh, that they would be awarded. So uh, for those of you that, um, you know, that have companies that consist of uh, pickup trucks with front plows attached, you know, generally we find that if, you, if you're a contractor and you've got, uh, say, eight to 10 trucks with uh, eight to 10 foot plows uh, mounted on, on front of them, you really have the ability to perform the work that's required under this, on this particular contract. And we'd really like for you to give some consideration uh, to potentially submitting a bid uh, during the current uh, Detroit Bid Week process. The other snow related contract is loading and hauling snow uh, from the downtown area. And generally, we'll look for companies that have large front-end loaders, uh, as well as double-bottom trucks. And, you know, unfortunately, historically, uh, you know, we've awarded those contracts uh, for the most part, you know, to, you know, some of the larger uh, construction contracts that may also be involved, for example, in a demolition project. I do think that there's a great opportunity for, you know, smaller Detroit companies uh, that I know have these types of resources, but for whatever reason, haven't opted to bid on these contracts in the past. But I really want to get that message, excuse me, get that message out 
uh, and let you know that that, you know, that particular contract, I think, is a great opportunity uh, for Detroit businesses that have uh, front end loaders as well as large double bottom uh, trucks. Um, I do just want to real uh, briefly talk about our, our, our speed cushion program. Uh, you know, this year we're going to be installing about 1,200 uh, speed cushions throughout the city, and we've received requests for uh, an additional 7,000 more. Uh, so we're going to be looking at significantly expanding that program uh, in 2021. And while we will be using some city staff uh, in some neighborhoods, the overwhelming majority of the work uh, is going to be done by contractors. And although I, I'm guessing that, you know, none of the folks that are on the call, excuse me, I'm guessing that none of the folks that are on the call have, have any experience uh, with installing speed cushions. I think one of the things that we've learned this year uh, is that, you know, we feel that this is something that, you know, a company that has any experience at all in doing asphalt work, whether it's, you know, paving, you know, smaller uh, private parking lots or, or maybe even doing some sidewalk repair. We think that this is something that you could become, you know, pretty well acclimated on, I, I think in a short period of time. And if there's some interest uh, in potentially putting yourselves in a position uh, to bid on some of these contracts uh, coming next spring, you know, I really hope that you take the opportunity to reach out to me or or folks in our engineering staff, so we can kind of show you what the process is and, and you can determine whether or not it might be potentially a fit uh, for what your respective company might be able to provide. And, uh, and, and we're looking at potentially, uh, obviously we're, we're gonna be making multiple awards for that particular program, but we see this as possibly being a program next year where we spend uh, between eight to $10 million just on this particular uh, activity. So I think there's some great opportunities out there. I think there's a potential for some Detroit companies to put themselves in a position uh, where contracts could be awarded to them. So uh, we look forward to, to working with you. I, I want it to be real brief, but of course, I'll be on the call and be prepared to answer any questions that any of you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. And um, so now we're going to go into the uh, presentation from the Civil Rights uh, Inclusion and Opportunities Office. And I believe Miss Amanda Saab is here. Hi, Amanda. All Hello. Right. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I'm going to hopefully get my screen to share so I can share my presentation. But if not, we are good to go regardless. Um, I hope everyone's having a wonderful morning. It's starting to feel like fall. And just echoing what uh, Council President uh, said in her reminders to sanitize and continue wearing our masks. Um, sometimes we think with colder weather um, that somehow we're out of it, but we're not. Um, so my name is Amanda Saab. I'm the Detroit Business Opportunity Program Manager inside of the Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Department known as CREO. And inside of our department, we have several different teams. We have our civil rights team. That one is obvious since we're the civil rights department and they handle, um, invest, they investigate complaints um, regarding uh, any civil rights uh, issues. We have our language access program, um, our incentives team, which upholds executive order 26-1, our construction outreach team, and as I mentioned, the Detroit Business Opportunity Program known as DBOP which I run. So we process applications, we maintain an online registrar and certify businesses um, annually. So as we talk about the different opportunities and working with the city, we highly encourage businesses that are Detroit-based to apply for the Detroit-based certification, Detroit headquartered certification, Detroit resident, if your business um, is comprised of more than 51% of uh, employees that are Detroit residents, you get an additional certification for that. Um, we also have our Detroit startup. So if you've been operating for less than two years, but you're in the city of Detroit, you qualify as a Detroit startup, you can get that certification as well. And all of this information is on our city website. So it's DetroitMI.gov and then forward slash departments civil rights inclusion. You can just type in civil rights and inclusion on the Detroit um, MI.gov website and pull up all this information because I know it's a lot. Our certification program costs are based on a sliding scale. 
So it's based on your gross receipts from the previous tax year. So that's how it's calculated. Um, so we do ask for your tax returns to verify that information. Um, and then just based on how much you make, that's how much your certification costs and they're good for one year. And we ensure that we're um, upholding our inclusion and equity by providing resources to access to capital, um, especially during COVID, we have really stepped up and sharing all of the grant and loan information, um, whether that's partnering with SBA to host digital events um, with council president's office to ensure that people understand the information. Um, so I highly encourage everyone to check out our Facebook page, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash civil rights department. And um, we post all of our resources there along as uh, DetroitMeansBusiness.org, um, where we post all the toolkits, all the resources, you have access to one-on-one -on -one mentors. So um, businesses are eligible for free 20 minute consultation with an expert. So you can ask any questions um, you may have about capital, about resources, anything related to your business needs specifically now. And if anyone has any direct questions, um, please feel free to send me an email. If you have questions about your certification, about becoming certified, my email address is amanda, A-M-A-N-D-A, -A dot sab, S-A-A-B as in boy, at detroitmi.gov. All right, Amanda, was that, that's it? That's it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, so I guess this is the portion where we have our question and answer, and I see Ms. Linda Wesley here from Council President's Office. So, Linda, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Member Ayers. So if anyone has any questions uh, for anyone, for Clifton, for Tyrone Clifton, or for Palencia Mobley, or for Ron Brundage, or Amanda Saab, uh, if you have any questions, if you will push star nine, we will be able to see your name and you'll be able, to, I can unmute you and you'll be able to ask your questions. We'll also be checking on Facebook to see uh, if there are any questions on Facebook. So if you have any questions, please don't be shy. Please ask your questions. Now is the time. I am waiting, I'm looking for any callers to have any questions. Please, again, just push star nine to ask let your me, questions. Let, let me say this to those that have uh, called in. What, what we're saying to you right now is that you got a lot of information from uh, Tyrone and from Valencia and from Ron, and they were, talked about numerous opportunities. And so if you are a person that is interested in anything that they said, you need to press star nine and ask your question because it can't come to you any more clear than this. This is your opportunity. This is your time. Uh, it's being served up on a platter for you. So we need you to go ahead, ask these questions because later on, I don't want you all to see me and Meyer and say, you all are bringing <laughs> us opportunities because that's not true. This is your time. And Linda, it looks like we do have one person, last three digits, five, nine, three. Five nine three. And five three. nine three. Yes. Trying to find five nine three to unmute them. Okay. Five nine three. You should be able to unmute yourself. Or Linda, can you unmute? Because I'm not able to. Five yeah. nine three. I'm looking for five nine three as we speak. Call okay. five, nine, Hello. Three. Hello. Go ahead, with, go ahead with your question. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't know how to unmute it on the phone. So my name is Crystal Johnson, and I have a small business. Um, I do commercial cleaning, and I see a couple opportunities to bid for, and this will actually be my first time bidding. Um, I just have a question about like the bidding process as far as normally when I give quotes, you know, for my facilities, I do measurement. So I need to know like how, you know, they ask me for like a quote for, uh, you know, a certain project, but how do I know 
whether to bid up or down without seeing the facility or what they're asking for. You know, I do see on the paperwork, you know, like the um, the description of the job, but I just don't know the process is, um, you know, like if you're bidding too high or too low, you know, like I need kind of like help with that because I don't know how to bid without looking at it. Like, you know, because, you know, like a big contract is different from like me going into a facility, um, um, quoting, giving a quote for, you know, business or, you know, a facility even if it's big because I normally like go and do measurements and go by measurements, you know, uh, uh, different different aspects of the job, like how how much of the clean measurements, how, you know, dirty the facility is. And how many times, you know, like the, um, what they require as far as the um, the length and the time, how, mu how much they need, you know, service for. So, so Crystal, I think that Tony can like probably address and, your question. You know, about you know uh, uh, different, different aspects of the Got it. Okay, thank you, Crystal, for your question. I'm, we're going to turn it over to Tony because she can uh, walk you through that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you for your question. <laughs> So are you okay. speaking of the RFQQ that is up for janitorial? And if so, that's, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you my email address. It's mm -hmm. limit, L-I-M-M-I-T-T-L at DetroitMI.gov. And I just want to explain that the RFQQ is asking you for your qualifications. Um, so we're not actually looking for you to bid on an actual site because typically when, once you're approved on the supply schedule for janitorial, you'll get mm -hmm. a notice with the actual scope of work, um, the square footage of the facility that they're asking you to provide the cleaning services for. So this one, um, and I can help walk you through how to submit okay. your information for your qualifications to be approved for the janitorial okay. supply schedule. Okay, thank you so much. Ms. Tony, what's your last name so I can, uh, is it the, the, um, it's limit, L-I, M-M-I-T-T, oh, M-M-I, okay, thank you, you're welcome, okay, great, thank you, our next caller is, uh, last three digits of your telephone number is 827, Caller 827, you are unmuted. I'm trying to unmute you. Caller 827, your line is unmuted. Go ahead with your question. Hi, my name is Donovan Turner. I'm a small business owner here in the city of Detroit. And uh, I was on your website and I was wondering well, what I saw was uh, they had opportunities for uh, uh, regarding hospital um, activities or um, work there. And uh, I was wondering if you had any opportunities for or knew of any opportunities for medical supply delivery. Uh, that's what my business is based towards. And um, I was just wondering about that. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you today. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you for um, your question. Uh, we always have a need to um, provide medical supplies. And our health department typically has requests for health supplies. So I want to make sure that you register at our website, which is www.detroitmi.gov forward slash supplier. And when you register your company, you want to make sure that you select the NIGP codes, and that's those are the categories that you are um, your company provides the services for, so that you can receive the notifications. Once you set set those notifications I'm sorry, in the you're system, opportunities. Uh oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. If you register, you'll receive the notification from our system. Did you okay. get the website? 
Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Tony. Before we go to our next caller, I just want to make mention that we are going to have our uh, second round of questions and answers after our business consultants present as well. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that. Uh, caller 941, caller 941. I'm trying to unmute you. 941, your line is unmuted. Go ahead with your question. Caller with the last three digits, 941, your line is unmuted. Hello? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, hello. I am calling on behalf of a design engineering firm, and we were listening to uh, several of the upcoming opportunities for um, DWSD. I believe we heard, um, you know, there are going to be some sewer improvements and inspection um, sewer services, um, some condition assessment, uh, design, some, some water mains, et cetera. Um, are these opportunities um, coming up really soon? And what are the what is the timeline um, after we receive the notification? Or better yet, what is the process between um, receiving notification, bidding on the project, and actually starting on the project if we receive the bid, if we win the bid? So um, just as an FYI, it usually takes several weeks uh, and could be several months depending on the dollar value of the contract. Uh, there are certain contracts that we as DWSD um, just go to our Board of Water Commissioners and we're able to award those contracts. Uh, there are other contracts that require us to go both to our board as well as the mayor and the city council for review and approval. So those contracts take a little bit longer. Um, in general, we are able to uh, award contracts at the Board of Water Commissioner level uh, for design and or professional services that, not, that do not exceed $2 million uh, per annum. But from the time of mm -hmm. it and evaluated uh, and presented to the board uh, is still usually a four to six week period, just depends on when it falls. Um, and as long as all the paperwork is in order and clearances are together, um, then notices to proceed, uh, you know, imminently uh, are issued. Uh, but usually there is some work or some hurdles sometimes with folks needing to redo paperwork, just depending on timing and whether or not something expired from the time the bid was submitted uh, until time of award. So, Generally, you know, if it's something that only our board has to approve, potentially six to eight weeks. Um, if it has to go through those other processes, <clears throat> it may be as long as, let's say, 12 weeks from when the bid was submitted. And that's pending. There aren't um, questions or something has to be rebid and things of that nature. I see. Can I ask a follow-up question, please? Um, and this is related to budget. Uh, so. We know that COVID-19 has really put a strain on um, uh, cities, municipalities, the state to collect uh, taxes in order to fund a lot of projects. So um, what are you anticipating in terms of funding shortages and, you know, following and th these projects actually occurring in the next fiscal year? Oh. DWSD's funding mechanism is not via taxes, it's through repairs uh, and payment of bills. There is some preliminary modeling that has been done. Um, we anticipate being able to move forward with RCIP because we also receive a $50 million lease payment from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Uh, however, you know, things are subject to change. 
Uh, but as of right now, we're not anticipating having a major impact uh, to what we have set aside, you know, to do um, in the upcoming fiscal year. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We have just two, we have two questions from Facebook. Uh, one from a Miss Munson Gaines. She says, good morning. Thank you very much for this forum. Would you consider doing something similar to this for companies that provide professional services? My company, JMG Connects, provides leadership development, training, coaching, and human resources support services. So I guess I'll take that one. <laughs> um, I don't think any of us are opposed to it. Um, some of those things are done in-house with our HR department, but um, to the person that, that asked the question, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember your name. Linda, what's the name? Miss Munson Gaines. Okay, Miss Miss Munson Gaines. Um, we can do some research and talk with um, HR and just figure out how we can marry the two, but we'll follow up with you um, and let you know what we find out. But I don't think that either myself or council president are opposed to it. And the other uh, question was from Miss Winnie. She uh, wanted to know, Palencia, what was the website given for the Detroit Water and Sewerage, uh, the bid directory website, and the bonfire site to register? Thank you. So for DWSD and Detroit Building Authority Project, the website where those opportunities are hosted is bid, B -I -D, net, N -E -T, direct, D -I -R -E -C -T, dot com slash mitten, M I T N. And that slash is a forward slash. So that website address is bid, net, direct, dot com forward slash mitten, M I T N. And when you go to that site, you know, don't just focus on Detroit opportunities. That is a site that has opportunities for, from municipalities across uh, Michigan. So don't just focus on Detroit opportunities because there could be something in another municipality that you are very well suited to do. Um, the other website that GLWA hosts its bidding opportunities on is called Bonfire. And I actually am pulling up the wrong one, so hold on, because there are two bot fires. Um, nope, this is not it. Hold on one second. Vendor registration. So the the website for Bonfire is G O B O N. FIR.com, gobonfire.com. And you would go through support uh, to figure out how to do their vendor registration. And I'm not sure if their vendor registration is free or it has a fee, um, but usually the fees are minimal for these types of websites. So you have access to all the bid opportunities. Great. Thank you, uh, Palencia. Uh, Council Member Ayers, I did see one other question. I do see that we're uh, just a, a couple of minutes behind. Did you want me to hold that question and did you want to move forward? Uh, actually, we're actually right on, on time. We're, uh, it's only 1055, so our next portion starts at 11. So we can take that question. Okay. The uh, question is from Alex, uh, I'm sorry, Alexis Mann. Good morning. My company, AM Environmental Services, provides lead inspections, lead stabilization, and dust hazard removal. I am registered in Oracle and working on getting my certs and clearances. Are there any bids for this type of work coming up? Tony, is that one for you? I'll, I'll take that one. Um, all the upcoming bids will be coming out between um, 
now and the next few months. I do know that there are potential opportunities for you registered in Oracle. You should receive that notification. Awesome. I have one other question. Just one second. The question is from Claudia Helton. She says, I consult with several plumbing and sewer contractors seeking info for all of them. Ace Plumbing Sewer and Drain Cleaning LLC. Okay, Lindsay, I think that one's yours. I'll take that one. What's, what's the our website question? I think it was just a comment uh, from Claudia uh, Helton. She says, I consult with several plumbing and sewer contractors seeking info for all, in, all of them. So she's seeking information and uh, she is with Ace Plumbing Sewer and Drain Cleaning LLC. So my suggestion would just be to go to the bidnetdirect.com slash mitten website, see what opportunities are available um, and, uh, you know, begin to think about how, um, you know, they would bid or uh, go after some of those opportunities and, you know, uh, have conversations with existing contractors that are in this space. Uh, and talk about the ability to partner for certain opportunities. I'd also like to offer them to take a look at the Oracle site. I currently have a bid that's out for plumbing. So she can take a look at that scope of work and she can share that with those that she can sought for so that they can determine if this is something that they're interested in um, to submit a bid. And Linda, there was a first part to Ms. Helton's question. She asked, what is the monetary cap for the sewer repairs without going to, mayor, to the mayor or city council for approval? Oh, great. Thank you. I didn't see that. So our construction contracts, um, generally speaking, if they are less than $5 million per annum, they do not require mayor or city council. Well, they don't require city council approval. We do keep the same uh, process in place. Um, that existed when the Financial Review Commission was in place, that the mayor does uh, take a look at contracts valued at more than $750,000 or that are longer in duration than two years. Uh, so we do take uh, contracts like that uh, to him uh, so he can just review and understand, you know, what the departments are doing. We kept the same process in place that existed under the Financial Review Commission. Okay. Now, departments have to do that. So... Um, but that process of him saying, you know, having a review um, doesn't take as long as the process by which you have to get things uh, onto the city council agenda um, and get it through committee and then get it to the full uh, board. That's just a, a basic review so he understands everything that's going on in the department. Thank you. I'd like to add that for citywide contracts, any contract that is over $25,000 in value, we take to the the council for approval. Um, and we also share that same um, mayor review if it's over 750,000 or if the duration is over two years. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we covered the city process as well for her. Great. I see something from Mary Mixon. This is for Mr. Brundage. How can I take advantage of bidding on snow removal if I only have two trucks um yeah i, I indicated earlier that uh, for our snow plowing contracts we separate the contracts into each of the, the seven city council districts and uh, the reason that we do that is that we want to make sure that we give uh, as many opportunities as possible uh, especially to the, the smaller detroit-based companies uh, one of the things that we haven't done but we certainly opened uh, for consideration is that uh, if a company submits a bid and maybe they don't have the resources, obviously two trucks uh, wouldn't be sufficient uh, to be awarded uh, an entire uh, city council district. Uh, but I, I would still encourage you to submit a proposal, to submit a bid, and there might be an opportunity for us to consider awarding you a portion 
uh, of a city council district. I also encourage you to maybe uh, see if there's an opportunity for you to partner with another company that might have uh, two or three trucks themselves that uh, between you and uh, their company, there might be an opportunity to bid on and be awarded uh, an entire uh, city council district. Uh, but, I, but I think that the, the main takeaway is, uh, is that if it turns out that you only have two trucks, uh, don't feel that you can't submit a bid. Uh, please go ahead and submit, a, submit the bid. Uh, then we'll review it at the appropriate time and see if there's an opportunity uh, for you to potentially be awarded a portion uh, of a city council district. A, qu a question from Ron Weaver. Are you open to a JV on snow removal? Okay, I guess I'm Ron Weaver, but okay. A am I open no. to a what? No, a joint Ron, venture. Joint venture. Ron Weaver, we he's, he's asking you the question. Are you open to a JV on snow removal? Well, we, we, we certainly are. I think uh, that was part of the response uh, to the prior question. Uh, again, if, if your company is such that you don't feel by yourselves that you have the, uh, you have adequate resources to be awarded uh, an entire uh, city council district, uh, we certainly encourage you to partner uh, with another company. Maybe you can reach out to the uh, to the uh, resident that just submitted the prior call and uh, maybe you guys can kind of get together and partner. All right, thank you, Ron. So it's now 11, so we're gonna move into um, our DGC, which is Detroit Economic Growth Corporation's um, portion of the presentation. And Ms. Lily Hamburger is with us. Lily, could you please take the floor? Thank you so much, Councilmember Ayers. It's good to see you um, on a screen. And thank you so much for putting this together with Council President Jones and thanks to your staff for including us. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, everybody. My name is Lily Hamburger. I'm with the as council member mentioned. And um, we have a team at the DEGC called the District Business Liaisons. And our job is to help small business owners in the city of Detroit navigate um, what you need for your business to grow and thrive in the city. So if you need help navigating any of the city departments or agencies or finding any of the resources that you heard on today's call, if you need assistance connecting with lenders or nonprofits in the city that can help your business, um, I hope that you will reach out to us and find your district business liaison you can find out who that is on the DEGC's website, DEGC.org, or on the city's website. And there is one business liaison for every council district. So we are eager and excited to, to help you on your journey. Um, so for today's call, um, we have some esteemed uh, business advisors on the phone to talk about some of the things that um, are necessary and um, advisable when you're getting ready to bid on some of these city contracts. Um, and so there's a couple of things that I'll mention before turning it over to um, our technical assistance providers. One is um, Detroit at Work is available to help you if you're scaling up to um, take on a contract and you need to hire some new folks. Make sure that you're um, looking at Detroit at Work for hiring locally and scaling up in the talent um, area of your, of your business. There's a lot of resources out there in the financial realm. So if you need um, some cash on hand working capital to get your business to the next level to take on a contract, there's micro lenders, there's um, flexible capital for small businesses out there as, as well as commercial business loans. Um, and so I wanna make sure that that's something people are thinking about. Um, and then, of course, there's business coaching. So if you need help on um, accounting or legal or some operational things to get your business ready, um, there is one-on-one -on -one coaching available. And Amanda from Creo, when she was speaking, she mentioned a website, Detroit Means Business. This is a new website that um, was started since the pandemic began, and there's a ton of great resources for your business. It's DetroitMeansBusiness.org and you can find access to one-on-one -on -one business coaching there. You can find um, financial resources there, as well as information on how to keep your operations COVID safe. So I highly recommend looking at that website. Um, 
And then uh, definitely take a look at those certifications that Amanda was talking about because they can certainly help you in um, winning some of this work um, that the city has to offer. So um, those are some uh, tips from the DEGC and I will now introduce some of our um, business advisors that we have on the phone. We have Laura Simon here from Best Practices Consulting Services, Diane Walker from Diane Walker LLC, and Bianca Graves from Leading Edge Solutions. And so to start, I will turn it over to Laura. Hello, good afternoon, or actually good morning still, um, to Council President Ayers and to um, our Council, I'm sorry, Councilwoman heirs at large and Council President uh, Jones. Thank you to the staff there at Detroit and the various departments for allowing us to sit in. I'm going to say really briefly, uh, the fact that they've actually allowed this level of deliberation to happen around contracting project management and things that are coming through the city, this is really rather revolutionary and I hope that all of you callers have a chance to actually take down some of this information. As a consultant, operations is really something that you need to pay attention to your capacity to bid your financial wherewithal to actually handle the the upcoming projects around labor around inventory uh, around equipment to supplies all the rest of it and if you're not overly proficient or familiar with the process it is not a bad idea as they indicated to get on bidnet get onto mitten get on to uh, bid for michigan.gov get on any of the other free sites go to some of the other cities pull down some of their specs and get very proficient even FOIA, the freedom of information act is a great way for you to actually look at previous awards and sort of look at what the rfp looked like and then make a measurement as to how the awarded person was able to participate another organization because we only have a few minutes to you could actually work with that does a real good network collaboration joint venture space is the Michigan Minority Contractor Association. The Michigan Minority Contractor Association. Uh, Jason Cole over there, 300 River Place, um, is a really great spot where you get like-minded people. Um, you want to make sure you can work well with someone, right? You can't just call them up and say, let's go on this snowplow contract together because you need to make sure that they are timely. They've got the financial wherewithal, they're insured properly. Um, their, their drivers have good drive etiquette. There are a lot of things that you have to take into consideration. So it makes a lot of sense to first be in the networks and, and spaces where you can actually get some access um, to information, process, and funding. Those are some of the things that are probably offset you because your operations has to be really tight. Um, I did ask and, and I was granted permission we offer open office hours. Uh, you can really use the Detroit Means Business. You can go to the 313 Strong. There are a plethora of new resources since we're in this whole virtual world beyond just DEGC technical assistance. You're not limited. You've got uh, D to D still operating out of the uh, Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. And believe me, what Lily mentioned earlier about having access to those business liaisons they're like lock and stop. They can tell you immediately where things are going. Having ideas about new future lettings, great opportunity to stay really close to people who are grinding through the process. So you don't have to wait for a 30 day bid opportunity and think you can get up to speed really quick with the delivery in the RFP. Really start to network. That's, I'm going to say that you really want to start to network. And if it's okay, I'm going to show you really quickly. I'm going to share the screen because it's being recorded. I think is um, not necessary for me to do too much. We have open office hours. If you click the link from 8:30 until 11:30 on Wednesday and Thursdays, 4:30 until 7:30, and we just launched two new programs helping uh, Detroit-based businesses who are clothing manufacturers and then food truck operators. We're really excited about this new process as we've had more than 47 increase. Um, during the COVID space to talk about things that they were interested in. I'm really big about being realistic. If you're not just talking about doing biz and you're looking at opening up a food truck operation and not a restaurant, or you're thinking about being a clothing manufacturer, we talked through a six week cohort and training program. If you want more information about it, I've left this information with Ms. Stacy, so you can get access to it. But on the biz, on the biz side, um, nothing beats a try. You got to actually get out there. 
you got to get out there and just bid for the project and then ask for a debriefing. They didn't mention that they do debriefings, but you can ask. Ask for a debriefing. Why wasn't I compliant or fit? And so with that, I'll turn it over, um, Lily, to the next person who you're going to have. Great. Um, thank you so much, Laura, for that. And I definitely agree that networking is essential when you're growing your business. So the Minority Contractors Association, the Michigan Minority Supplier Developments Council, um, anything that is relevant to your business, make sure you're talking to other business owners. Um, perhaps a joint venture is the way you get started with these city contracts. That's really, really a critical piece. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, let's move to Diane at this time. Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone. And I wanna make sure, am I heard first of all, cause I'm last time I was doing this. Well, thank you. Thank you everybody for nodding your heads that I can see. All right, my company is a uh, Diane Walker, Walker Consulting Company, and we offer strategic planning and we also help companies develop their RFPs. But just and let's take a note from what Laura is speaking of. It is good that you want to, that, first of all, that we have this forum and that, uh, the councilwoman has this forum for us, but, and I know that COVID has been one of those things that taking everybody by surprise, but we need to be ready to pivot and change our thinking the way we do business. And we already know that. And so with that said, you might want to engage into some of these uh, like construction or you, want, you might want to do speed bumps, some of the other things, but you have to also look at as you go through and you want to engage in those things that is your company ready? I mean, what if you got the contract? If you got the contract, do you know that there are so many different steps and things that you need to have in place already to make sure that you're able to manage and have contract compliance? Because that's a big thing. It's not good for you to actually get into this arena and to get the contract and you're not able to provide you know the services as needed and that's going to give you a black eye for your businesses so with that said you you need to look strictly at this these are things that i want to have my contract we want to look to see what your vision and goals for your business are and you have to have maybe three to four major goals for your business and determine what steps need to be taken to change structures or to have processes or procedures or strategic plans or who are you going to team with to help you to make sure that you achieve these particular goals because it's nothing it is not good to actually have these contracts and not to comply because you won't get that chance again it's going to be a black eye on your business so by all means please take advantage of the networking opportunities that are out there make sure that you talk with companies and uh, develop the alliances so that if you don't have the requisite experience because I know that when these contracts come about they may add, require two or three years experience you might not have it so it's always good to do the joint ventures because uh, if you're not part of the if you're in construction you're not part of the construction groups if you're not part of some of the other um, uh, groups that are out there that you can do these networking with and just get people to know you then then you won't be able to frame the company that you want to so our our company actually helps other companies to develop their goals and to define what the objectives are and to help you to achieve those goals and i'm hoping that a lot of you have taken advantage of all the grants that have come about to help you because if you have received grants you now have an opportunity to step back and say how can i get my company structurally fit to be able to survive getting a ten thousand or hundred thousand dollars or a million dollar contract because too much who is given much is required so if you're given a million dollar contract you would have to be have your eyes out and your t's crossed because they're going to audit you and if you have a ten thousand dollar contract even so you may get the contract but it's people if you don't have the people which detroit at work they can help you with resources for employees, but then you have to keep records, have people that are part of your team. And that doesn't mean that you as a company have to do it all yourself. You can outsource these things and have other the payroll services, human resource services. You can have other groups help you to make you complete because a lot of times when people are not expert in all realms of business, but they need to make sure that they align, well, I'm weak in this source, then let's go and 
find somebody that's going to help to partner with me to make me that like the uh, complete piece of the pie. So with that said, um, I applaud your strategies are there and that your business is fit. You know, let's do a fit test for your business to find out where you are and where you need to go. And that's what we do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Walker. And um, thanks for talking about grants as well. I'll, I just want to make one comment about the grants, which is that in this landscape, since COVID-19 has impacted us, every single business, every single business type has been impacted by this um, public health crisis come, become an economic crisis. And the grants um, landscape is changing day to day, week to week, month to month. So if you have applied to something and not received a grant, do not get off the horse. Keep applying, keep your head up. This is such a tough moment to be a business owner, not like being a business owner was easy to begin with. Um, so please keep your head in the game. Um, on DetroitMeansBusiness.org, there is a financial resources page where you can see the most up-to-date information about grants and loans that are available. Um, so with, you know, with the grants landscape changing all the time, just keep your head in the game, keep your head up, stick with it, um, and um, keep applying to things that will continue to change and unfold. Um, so thank you for mentioning that, Diane. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Bianca Graves now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bianca Graves with Leading Edge Business Solutions, and we provide wraparound business support services to small businesses in particular, uh, but then we also assist large businesses as well. And then we also help you with your capacity building, uh, strategic planning, uh, proposals, certifications. We help you with bonding, um, access to capital. Now, again, as, they, as Lily just said, with the landscape of the pandemic, you can uh, look at the grants as an option for funding. But I think it's um, my colleagues who have really expressed a lot that you need to appreciate. And um, I, 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 uh, I echo what they just said. It's very, very important to first and foremost, um, make sure that you can do the work. A lot of what we do is what we call behind the curtain uh, business support services because as, a, as a, a business owner, you're good at the work that you provide. Maybe you need some assistance behind the curtain with um, your operations or putting your processes and infrastructure in place. Um, I, I, I recognize a lot of small businesses say, oh, here's a million dollar contract. But if you've never done a million dollar contract or if you've never done a $500,000 contract, a million dollars looks great. Those commas and zeros impress me too. However, getting the work is not the challenge. Completing it successfully is the challenge. And that's what helps you to stay in business. And so it's very important that you know that you have the capacity to do the work, not just because you know it's, it's a service you provide and all of those commas and zeros look fabulous. That's not exactly the way you should probably pursue going after some work. And so part of that is, again, what they talked about this morning, considering doing some joint ventures, if you yourself don't have the capacity, because there's the first order business is consider scaling up, you know, you gradually grow to a point where you can get to a million dollars, but understand too that 10 $100,000 contracts is a million dollars. And so that's it works the same way, because it's not just doing the work, it's having the, the workforce to do the work. Um, you know, do you have the bonding necessary? Uh, do you have the past performance necessary? And then sometimes you can look at the teaming agreements and, and joint ventures as, an, as a way, which I think is very important as small businesses, um, that we look to collaborate together because we all bring strengths. And so again, I think as Laura said too, you wanna make sure you wanna vet who you, <laughs> be very clear, you wanna vet who you team with, but the teaming is an opportunity for you to um, maybe go after some opportunities. Um, Ron Brunger said that, you know, you need to have six or seven trucks. I heard one of the callers say she has two. Okay, well, if you have two and I have four, we have six. And so we can go after that work. And so um, those are opportunities as well. I think it's very, very critical that you, if you don't do anything else, hire uh, an attorney and hire an accountant because this is what they do for a living. And I think it's very important to understand what contracts say and what you're committed to when you win an opportunity because the, the owner is going to hold you to that. And that's, that's critical 
you know, they talked about crossing your, crossing your T's and dotting your I's. The compliance comport, uh, component of a contract is very, very critical. And so that's what helps you to also, you perform the work, but then are you also adhering to what the contract uh, requires you and holds you to as well? Um, we will, I also work with uh, Southwest Detroit Business Association. I, Laura, Laura talked about Michigan uh, Minority Contractors Association. I work with Jason with that. Um, Southwest Detroit Business Association is also another uh, organization that kind of helps small businesses in the city of Detroit. Um, we work with trying to get you certified. If you need any assistance with getting certified with the city, all of the opportunities that the city is bringing. Uh, now is the time. If you have a small business, now is the time to go after all these opportunities with the city of Detroit. I appreciate you, uh, Council Member Ayers and Council President Jones, for putting this forum together. Because how often do you get to talk to um, the directors of the DBA, DWSD, and DPW? You know, just and they're giving you opportunities, which is part of a, a small businesses challenge. You know, where are the opportunities? Well, you have the directors of all three of these departments right here this morning. And so now it's really incumbent upon you to take advantage of the opportunities. Um, we as business consultants are here to assist you. You have the city departments. I think this is a great opportunity for you to grow your business and we look forward to doing it, whatever we can to help you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Um, I, and I, I hope that everyone really listened to what it is that they were saying, but I'm gonna take a, a point of uh, special privilege here because Boise Jackson, you are here with us. And I know you have some uh, internet difficulties, but you're here and I would like to give you an opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Mayor. I uh, appreciate uh, all of you uh, for taking this time today uh, and the directors as well that we scheduled to be a part of this uh, Detroit Bid Week to share opportunities with you. Uh, so today is about uh, listening to all those opportunities and I'm gonna talk to you about some more that's coming up. Uh, ultimately, we will have a bridge between Oracle and Mitten uh, that's in the works so that you have one place to go to see all of them, uh, but that's going to be over a period of time. Uh, the unfortunate thing for me is I don't get to see any of your faces. Most of all of you called in and we can't see your faces, so you can't really get to know the companies. And I had hoped that uh, during this week we'll be able to get to meet some of you, but uh, for whatever reason you wish to stay on the phone and not share your faces. So that's unfortunate, but as we do more of these, hopefully we'll be able to see faces because the only ones that I see now uh, are the department directors and the uh, council member staff and the uh, and Lily Hamburgers group. <clears throat> so with that, I want to share with you a couple of things subject to the vote on November 2nd of this year on what is called Proposal N. That's for the Neighborhood Improvement Program. So in addition to the things that the directors talk about and opportunities, and the things that uh, Lily, Bianca, Diane, <clears throat> and uh, Laura talked about, uh, please uh, take heed to those. Uh, we are working on a program that would enable us to demolish demolition uh, mini homes as well as rehab mini homes. That will include demolitioning, that would include trash outs, and that would include roofing jobs. And there was a many of those, and those bids will be out there on the respective websites. We will start off by doing a pre-qualification package. Uh, I'm required uh, uh, as uh, deemed by city council and administration collectively, we will have 50% of those contracts awarded to Detroit businesses. 30% of that will be set aside for small businesses. And above all, we're gonna ask that you hire 51% Detroit residents, okay? So those pre-qualifications will be going out in September. Please take a look at it. Uh, the things that have already been talked about, get ready to do that. And then in October and some other times after, obviously the, the vote gets done and, and we're able to move forward, you start seeing these bid packages uh, start going out. We are hoping, we are confident that you will be uh, knowledgeable with all the things you've heard today that you will be able to join. We've got 26 companies tied into this program today and there was nine new ones in 2019 and 2020 alone. So we are hoping that we will have and achieve uh, you know at least the, the numbers that I just mentioned before. You know one out of two contract that's 50 percent right. 30 uh, percent set aside for small comes so we're not forgetting the small guys uh, and just giving all the contracts to the big people. 
So we're looking out for that. And above all, our commitment to counsel. And I'm sure Janae will be beating me up her and, and everybody else if we don't have 51% Detroit residents. So we will achieve those goals, but we need your help. So I look forward to uh, meeting all of you and look forward to more forums like this so we can continue to educate you on what it is. Does not cost you a dime to see a bid, nothing, what, on none of those places. So uh, please, uh, please uh, help us help you, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Harris. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jackson, <laughs> for being here and um, making people aware of some of the pending opportunities uh, based on you know whatever happens in November, uh, the votes that people cast. Um, you know, I hope that things work out so that way we can have a, a more vast array of things for people to do. And in regards to the, these forums, House President and I are definitely committed to making sure that we continue having them, uh, whether it's, you know, things turn around and we get to be around each other again, or we have to continue to do it virtually, we're going to do our part to make sure that people have opportunity, because that's, that's really what it's about. So at this point, um, for those that are still on with us, and those that are on Facebook, this is your time to ask these questions. So if you have questions, please press star nine. And if you're on Facebook with your question, go ahead and type it in, make sure it's a complete question because we wanna give you a complete answer. And I'm gonna turn it over to my team, Jalen Jennings. Jalen, take it away. Uh, good morning, Detroit. Uh, I will be facilitating the Q&A portion for today. So it looks like uh, if some we have one caller, uh, we have uh, eight two seven. These are the last three digits of your cell phone number. So you are unmuted. Caller, can you hear us? Okay. No. Caller eight two seven. Uh, yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You uh, my name is Donovan Turner. I'm sorry. Donovan, you can. My name go is ahead Donovan Turner. Question. Yes, sir. My name my name is Donovan Turner. I called in earlier. I had a question. Um, I heard your colleague, uh, Ms. Hamburger, mention uh, activities uh, about nonprofits, information that's available for nonprofits in the city. Um, I have a small nonprofit business uh, called Detroit, based Detroit, uh, based Detroit Association. And I'm interested and collaborating with Detroit Public Schools, specifically Randolph. I'm a graduate of Randolph. Um, I would like to, I'm interested in, in collaborating with them possibly to see if I can help, if I, uh, based Detroit can help um, with contracting for the kids that graduate from uh, Randolph. Um, I believe our kids are the future of our city and I would, I would like to help them find work through Base Detroit Association. And I was wondering if there are any opportunities uh, or information that is available uh, regarding that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your question, Donovan. So um, Boise, I don't know if that's a question for you or for Tony, I'm not quite sure uh, who can address that one. Oh, yeah. oh Rick. Really quickly, if, if the caller would provide his contact information, we can at least get him ported over to Randolph. Um, I have established a relationship with the principal there based on what uh, we, we're trying to do with DPSCD. So if the caller gives his uh, email address and phone number, um, we will provide that information both to uh, Detroit Workforce Department uh, and the principal um, yep. and can reach out to him. Okay, thank you. Um, Donovan, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I don't want you to say your email address and your phone number over the phone or over the Zoom because this is uh, being broadcast live, but you can send uh, your information in an email to Jalen. You want to give your email address? Sure, you can send it to uh, Jennings, J E N N I N G S J A at DetroitMI.gov and we can send it over to Ms. Mobley. You got that, Donovan? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like we have another caller and the last three digits of your cell phone number 
are 154. You are now unmuted. Caller 154. Looks like we're having a little trouble with this caller. They're not unmuted. Yeah. I... Okay, well, we do have a few Facebook questions, so I'll just go to those questions. I believe this um, question may be for Mr. Boise. Are the bids with the city of Detroit restricted to payroll scales based on union pay scales with uh, the benefits packages? Uh, thank you, Jalen. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, the bids that we have uh, in our Oracle system uh, are not uh, uh, restricted to any of those. Uh, there are no restriction limitations. Uh, I would just urge you to look at the pre-qualification packages uh, that are coming out here in September, which is a tee up for all the upcoming things that are coming out there. But uh, no, they're not restricted to that, Jalen. Thank you. Um, we have a few more questions for you, Mr. Boise, so hang on tight. Uh, so this is from Tony Franklin from the Franklin Safety Group. I would like to know if some of the larger projects like uh, heavy construction or road and bridge projects would need a safety management support, certified labor and training. We are also a WMBE. I'm not sure well, if you know. Yeah, uh, I'll comment and I'll, and I'll let Palencia and Ron, uh, you know, kind of chime in as well there. Um, the, I'm not sure if we, if they necessarily need that, but certainly as they're talking about construction here, they're going to need some 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 means of having some safety uh, plant part of their plan in it because everything that they do on construction has got to be safely done, uh, so to speak. Uh, and I'll ask Palencia and Ron to chime in uh, on that in terms of how we make sure that the projects that we're doing is conducive to safe working standards. So, with respect to DWSD. Uh, we have an in-house safety team uh, that goes out to project sites to ensure that uh, work is being done according to, you know, OSHA, my OSHA requirements, et cetera, and standard best practices. But uh, depending on the contractor, they may not have in-house, because the contractor is also responsible for having a site safety uh, supervisor, uh, typically. And so depending on the contractor, they may not have that particular person in house. And so that's why it's important. You know, I, I, I love stressing, uh, and I'm not a business consultant by any stretch of imagination, I'm just an engineer. Um, <laughs> but I love stressing the importance of relationships and networks. What Bianca talked about and what Diane talked about is how you leverage and grow your business. It's about making the relationships with those companies who you know, could benefit from your service and, and, and establishing um, a relationship based on business goals um, and how each company operates. And that's why lawyers and accountants are so important. Don't do the things uh, that is not in your level of expertise. You're never going to see me design a role because that's not what I do. Um, but really leverage and harness those relationships because some of the smaller companies are not going to have um, those, those safety personnel on staff and we'll need refresher training. I mean, we have just, to be honest, this year, I have never stopped. I mean, I've been at DWSD now like five years. I have never stopped a contractor, two separate subs for the same issue ever until a project we're doing in North Rosedale Park. I just told member Ayers, I think this North Rosedale Park might be the bane of my existence. Uh, but it is, it's, a, it's attributed to safety and just carelessness um, and recklessness. And so, you know, the contractors probably do need refresher training and there's a way to probably market your services for safety refresher training for contractors. So for the, if I can just add on to that, for the DPW road construction projects, uh, when we bid out our contracts, we have very specific uh, requirements that have to be met that have to be met to ensure that uh, while the construction is going on, 
uh, that, the, that the area is maintained in a safe manner. Uh, we don't necessarily have requirements in the contracts for uh, uh, individuals that are working on the project, but we do have specific guidelines that have to be met in terms of how the, uh, how the work area is maintained in a safe manner. Uh, you know, one of the things that we did at this year with the, with the coronavirus is that uh, we do require uh, any contractor working on uh, one of our DPW projects to ensure that, uh, that uh, the work is being performed uh, in a manner that meets all of the COVID-19 safety uh, requirements, which means that uh, any employee, any contractor employee working on our projects, uh, that they've got to wear a mask. If there's an opportunity for them to sit socially distance, uh, we expect for that to occur. So we do put that requirement, and that's a new addition that's been added uh, with our construction contracts this year. Uh, but as it relates to our safety requirements for individuals, uh, we really look at it more from the standpoint that we want uh, the environment where the road construction work is occurring to be completely safe. And we spell out those requirements pretty detailed in the contracts that we let. Tyrone? You know, similar to what Mr. Brundage just said, uh, we added that same language on our capital projects too. We expect contractors to have an added level of safety and security as it relates to the COVID and the, uh, the virus that's currently going on. That's very important. I mean, obviously I can't be at every job site every time, me or my staff. So the uh, ability to enforce that uh, and to make sure that that's happening, it, it's key for contractors. And I can tell you right now, some of those contractors are outsourcing, even if it's just one or two people, just making sure that workforce going to that site every day is following those safety measures. On large scale, scale capital projects, yeah, all large scale capital projects, a detailed safety plan is required. I give you an example, Joe Louis Arena, we demolished that because of its adjacency to the uh, people mover, it's adjacency to the Cobo Center. That plan was pretty detailed. It had to have sign offs by those other agencies too. And it's on the water. Um, so yes, it, it is vital. Um, however, it's not often that we directly go out for those services. That is a networking type of thing to do to help grow your business. I, I will tell you that. And, um, you know, Boise, as it pertains to proposal in, um, demolition, commercial demolition is going to be part of that too. There's going to be some, there might be an opportunity. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Clifton. Um, thank you, everyone who gave a response. Hopefully, Mr. Franklin, that answered your question. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping rules. I do want to reiterate that you can press star nine if you do have a question. We do have um, all your city departments, your major city departments here available for you. So if you do have a question, please press star nine. So it looks like we have caller 292. Um, you are unmuted. Caller 292. My name, is Nancy, my name is Nancy Marshall. Uh, I own Aluminum Supply Company and Marshall Sales in Detroit. Um, we've been in business here since 1948. I want to quickly say thank you very much for all the tremendous efforts you guys are putting forth to uh, help uh, Detroit businesses get business, uh, especially during this time with COVID making everything so challenging. Um, I got into this late, the meeting late today, uh, so I apologize for that. My question is, as a distributor, uh, on one hand, with my fastener business, um, how we go about now uh, obtaining RFQs to bid on um, city contracts, number one, and then the Loom Supply Company, which is also a distributor and a fabricator, um, I'm looking really to be able to participate on I mean, I'm a supplier, so can I used to go on your website and be able to pull RFQs from it. How are we doing it now? Yeah, if I could, Jalen. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, thanks again for uh, being interested. Uh, whether you're a fashioner company or uh, the luminous sightings or whatever else you have, uh, Latonia Stewart Limit uh, will get your information and we will make sure that you're able to, one, get registered 
the way we're set up in those systems is we, we, we identify your areas of expertise and the bids are automatically sent to you versus you having to hunt them down, okay? Uh, so if you're right. not even looking at it, it'll, it'll still come to you. Uh, and that's a part of our registration process. Uh, okay. And uh, you may want to start looking uh, uh, beginning next week uh, for some specific things re relative to uh, some of the things you just talked about, okay? Uh, because uh, right. in, in this bid week, there's some other things that uh, Tony has got out there that's queued up on janitorial, ground maintenance, facility uh, management, and those kinds of things. Okay. Excellent. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I know this portion is for uh, technical assistance, but it looks like we have uh, a few questions from Facebook um, for the city departments. So I'm going to try and go between each question. So we do have a question from, looks like, sorry, looks like we have a question from Kenota Senior. She's asking if you are a city employee, can you put in for a bid contract? Can you place a bid? I'll take, I'll take that one, uh, Jalen, if I could. Uh, if you are a city employee, and uh, city employee, uh, no, you're not allowed to bid on city services. Uh, unless you leave the city and, and go elsewhere, there's a year uh, period of time that you have to savor to be able to do that. Thank you, Mr. Boise. So I will take the next caller. Uh, that is caller 858. Caller 858, you are unmuted. Caller 858, you can... Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah, my name is Quentin Red. I'm the president of Vito Outsourcing. We specialize in warehousing and distribution services in the city of Detroit, um, Detroit-based business. Um, and my question is, um, I've been watching the website for a while now on bids, and I was wondering, is there anything in a pipeline that may need warehousing or distribution services in the near future? I'll take that one, Jalen. Uh, we have, uh, through COVID-19, we identified a, a lot of need for storage of uh, PPE and those related services. Uh, so currently, uh, with that and our in-house facilities, we've been able to uh, store our own things uh, within the facilities and there are city employees that, that's managing it. But we do have a contract that will be uh, coming up for bid over the next couple of years uh, for inventory management uh, that you'll be welcome to bid on uh, and it will be uh, open bid and competition. But as it is uh, today, I don't anticipate any warehouse uh, or inventory management bids uh, going out at, that, at, that, at this particular time. So, uh, but if you got short-term storage facilities uh, or short-term uh, storage capabilities and inventory management, skills. Uh, we still would like to hear from you. We still like to know more about your business. Uh, I still encourage you to get registered uh, because you never know what the second uh, round of COVID-19 may do in terms of what we need to in terms of storage. Okay, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Boise. Uh, so now we will go to caller 809. Caller 809, you are unmuted. Sorry, technical difficulties. Hello? There we go. Hello? Yes, we can hear can you. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, this is Darwin Parks, and I am with the uh, Michigan Minority Contractors Association. And first, I wanted to say that uh, to those who are uh, dealing with safety issues relative to the COVID-19, 
we do have a few members in our organization who are safety consultants. So you can uh, contact us as far as uh, doing that, and you can reach us at our website at uh, www.mich, that's M-I-C-H-M-C-A dot org. And thank you again for uh, the having the 50% Detroit-based business. Uh, my question also is, what about Detroit headquartered businesses? I know the executive order does not really address that, but that is something that we still need to address is the uh, Detroit headquartered businesses that have been around for 30 years and that are struggling right now because of, uh, first of all, the uh, executive order and uh, uh, proposal two, as well as uh, the COVID. And then my second question was relative to the 30% for small business. I think that's a great thing, but what is the criteria that you've established for a small business? Uh, we don't want it to be like uh, the whole, uh, you know, the big government thing where they said small businesses and then they said anything under a uh, uh, hundred employees, oh, you know, a hundred employees, which we know that's really not small business. So I want to make sure that that small business criteria is specific and targeted for small businesses like our members that are small, some of our members that are small businesses. Um, and that was, those were my two questions. And my third question was the 51% uh, ordinance. Uh, we had worked with council, uh, uh, woman pro temp Mary Sheffield on developing that 51% ordinance. Has that passed uh, with, you know, we had looked at some reductions on the threshold for that 51% ordinance because I know that uh, there was something existing that called it at 3 million um, and we were trying to get that reduced down. So did that get passed yet? Those are my three questions. Thank you. I take, I take all three of those. Okay. So all three? Okay. I, 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 to help out, okay. And I'll start with the last one. The 51% uh, 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 ordinance is still being worked. Uh, that's Executive Order 2016-1, uh, which uh, calls for all construction and construction-related contracts uh, over $3 million, $3 million and above to have 51% Detroit residents. Uh, so that one's still being worked uh, to the gentleman that you just talked and and there's more and a lot of energy going around that. Now saying all of that, uh, we are using for this proposal in that's up for vote on uh, in November uh, for this neighborhood improvement program, we are using the 51% cri uh, criteria as an absolute, okay? So, uh, it's not just the 2016-1 executive order. We just saying for this program, we want to have companies hiring 51% Detroit residents. We want 50% uh, of these contracts because you're talking about a $250 million uh, bond here. We want 50% of those to go to Detroit companies. And above all, we want to allocate and set aside 30% of the contracts to Detroit small business and micro businesses. So let me answer the other two parts of your question. When we say Detroit certified companies, uh, to your point, we are talking about Detroit headquartered businesses, Detroit based businesses, Detroit small businesses, Detroit resident businesses. We are talking about all those certifications. We have some companies fortunately today that has all four of those and they are getting contracts because as we apply in the bid process, all of those local preferences, they stand out of, uh, from some of the other companies. Their prices may not be the lowest, but as you apply the certifications, their pricing does uh, get dropped by those local preferences. So um, just a clarification to you, uh, to the gentleman, so when we say in certification, we are including Detroit resident businesses. So uh, that is a part of the plan. And lastly, on your question, as it relates to the, uh, Detroit small businesses, we're using the SBA definition uh, that uh, you are familiar with uh, as it relates to defining it. 
uh, and it is another certification uh, done by the Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Area, and we can uh, publish the information on all of these criteria uh, so that everyone will see uh, what it is. Uh, we will have those definitions in the pre-qualification packages that you see go out, okay? Thank you, Mr. Jackson. That was remarkable. <laughs> uh, so we do have, it looks like we have one last question on Facebook from Winnie Array. Uh, the question is, I am a supplier that distributes PPE. Would we be able to do a joint venture with the city in obtaining PPE for our buyers? I'm sure Mr. Jackson. Yep, I'll take that one and, and I'll let Tony uh, chime in. She's the czar on PPE for the city and my hat's off to her and, and other members of my staff for helping and get all that stuff done this year when we uh, had to adjust as, as in addition to setting up the state fairground. And I call her the test kit, swab kit uh, lady as well because she's collectively helped us uh, to get all those uh, things in the city. Now, going to the question uh, that was asked, uh, uh, Jalen, um, we are going to continually do bids for PPE going forward uh, as the need arises, uh, whether it's face masks, uh, whether it is sanitary wipes or hand sanitizers, uh, you name it, uh, and all those things. So we'll be doing bids. Uh, but no, we don't want you to joint venture with us because we don't plan on you know, being a supplier and buying them, okay? Uh, we have many companies, by the way, that have donated things like masks, and, and, and we use, have some of our local Detroit companies that have converted their operation into making masks and, that are, and making hand sanitizers and making wipes and so forth, and, and my hat's off to them uh, as well. But essentially, if you're interested and you have PPE that you want to uh, con you know, be contracted for. I'm asking that you give Latonia Stewart Limit your contact information. She has a list of all available companies that are suppliers, and that's the list she goes to when she's trying to send the bids and the needs out, okay? Uh, so we welcome that. Uh, the one thing I would want to add, though, we do not pay anybody up front for PPE, and we still try to use our uh, payment terms uh, to get you. If you deliver the PPE, then we pay you. But uh, a lot of companies want us, and I just wanted to throw that out there. A lot of companies want to pay, uh, get paid up front before they even deliver anything or make anything. Uh, that's a no for the city of Detroit, okay? So Jalen, I wanted to add my email address Um, so that the callers who's interested in L-I-M-M-I-T-T-L at DetroitMI.gov, you can email me um, so that I can put you on a list because I do share my list with some of our other partners like the Detroit, uh, Detroit Public School. So anybody that is looking for PPE, I'd like to have your information so that we can reference your information to them. But I also want to make sure that the suppliers who have PPE register on our Oracle site which is www.detroitmi.gov forward slash suppliers. That will allow you to put in your information and you'll receive those notifications so that when I'm putting out the bids for PPE, you will be notified. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And um, because you said that, we did, we did get a special shout out for you from Facebook. So Miss uh, Miss Crystal Mitchell said they she wanted to give you a special thanks uh, for your assistance and your patience and guidance uh, through guiding them through this process. So I just wanted to let you know that you did get us receive a special shout out um, on Facebook during this call. And um, so it looks like that was my last question from Facebook. If there are any more callers who would like to ask a question before we get off of this call, please press star nine. If not, um, I will turn it over to the lovely council member Ayers. Oh, looks like we have a Jaylen, call. Jalen, we did have one other question from Facebook too that I don't think we got to. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take this caller and I'll okay. do the Facebook question and then um, we can go from there. Okay, caller 984, you are in. Call 
984. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Okay, hi. Yes, I'm so sorry. When she, when the young lady gave her email address, um, some of that cut out regarding the PPE. Tony, I think they're uh, looking for your email address. It's limit limit l i m m i t t l at Detroit m i dot gov. Okay, thank you so much. I'll also post it on the Facebook chat shortly. Okay, and the, I'm sorry, the Facebook chat is, um, what is the name of that chat? Just so I make sure I have that. The Facebook chat is up under Council President Brenda Jones. Okay. It's on both of our, <clears throat> excuse me, it's on both of our pages. Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I do not. I don't see a, another question, Stacy. if you could help me with the question. Sure, it was um, from previous. I don't think we answered it. Someone was asking about any resources or organizations available to help minority businesses who wanted to do uh, joint ventures for bonding, insurance, different things like that. Okay, um, can any of our technical assistance members help us with that question or Lily, anyone? So I, I definitely think our three um, technical assistance providers here are good resources. Could I know you repeat the question? It kind of um, went out. I guess something's going on with the audio at times. Stacy, can you repeat sure. the question? Sure. The question was, uh, are there any associations or resources, organizations available for minority businesses who are interested in doing joint ventures? to help with their bonding um, and insurance requirements? I believe that the Michigan Minority Contractors Association probably has that in their suite of services. Um, but if you really wanted to find, I, I think Bianca mentioned she helped with bonding, but if you really wanna dig deeper and find out who those uh, bonding agents are, I would really go to MDOT the Michigan Department of Transportation, get under Ms. Williams and find out who she has for bonding agents because they actually have some really small um, venture projects and products that may actually support you. So get to MDOT, um, it's an actual agency or department with the state of Michigan, grab Annie Williams and she can connect you with those who can support you, especially if it's a performance bond or um, a few others. I thank you, also, Laura. Oh. I'm sorry, Jalen, may I jump in real quick, please? Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. I'd also suggest, um, again, Ann Williams, because MDOT has a bonding education program. Yeah. That is one way that you could consider um, looking at that program. I believe they're going to have a kickoff here in the month of October um, for their, I think it's like a six-week program. But also, I would suggest um, even the Small Business Administration with their Office of Surety Bonding, uh, they have an excellent program for small businesses. If you can get a bond through the SBA, they make it much easier than going through the standard uh, bond market uh, with actual with other um, surety bonds. But they're they they actually will subsidize more in the event that they had to um, there was a loss with their with their project. So I strongly suggest the SBA as well as a resource for bonding. Thank hey, Jaden, let, let me also add, uh, just clarify just uh, to the to the individual that just asked and for everybody else uh, across the city. Uh, we have uh, bonding requirements for construction. OK, you know, depending on what they are, as uh, Bianca mentioned, these are surety bonds uh, for performance bonds and payment bonds. OK, typically uh, it's 100 percent of the contract value. Uh, now, saying all of that, uh, we in this Neighborhood Improvement Program and others are going to define what the bonding requirements uh, will be, and it may be different, probably will be different than what MDOT has, okay? Uh, so, play, uh, you know, for those of you on the line, pay special attention to those bonding requirements. The definitions of those programs can help educate you on, on bonding, 
uh, but certainly make sure again you stay close to what the requirements are because we don't want you spending more money than you need uh, if you don't need to do it on the city project versus the MDOT project. On the insurance piece, there's three things on it. It's commercial general liability, there's workman's comp, and there's automobile, automotive. Uh, and each one of those carry uh, different levels of liability uh, tied to it. I would ask you and encourage you to stay uh, close to that. Now, saying that uh, Tony and, uh, and I and others and the council are uh, looking at having a program, so stay tuned for it on bonding and insurance so that we can further clarify and be able to help you navigate your way through that, okay? Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I hope you guys are taking uh, Mr. Jackson's words, you know, to heed. He's the man, so I hope you guys are writing all, all of this down. So it looks like we don't have any more callers and Facebook, we have no questions. So I would like to thank everyone and I would like to turn it over to Council Member Ayers to close us out. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Jalen. And to everyone that's on the line and those that are uh, participating via Facebook, we just wanna thank you all for taking the time out uh, to come and learn and, and have your questions answered. I'd like to thank all of the folks that have been on the panel. Uh, you all are amazing and we appreciate you. And honestly, we couldn't be where we are as a city without you all. And so I just encourage you to you know, stay lifted, continue to do what you do because we appreciate you. And the folks that are on the call, I'm sure they appreciate you. They don't even, they don't even know it yet, but they will. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so again, to um, council president staff, Thank you all for being here, putting it together and dedicating yourselves to this, to my staff. Uh, I just say the same thing. You all are rock stars. I appreciate you. Um, and again, continue to look at my page, Council President's page, because we will continue to have these events, uh, whether they're gonna be virtual or one day we'll all be together. But regardless, we have to keep going. Every day is a new day. And what we want to see is more people that are from this city, that are uh, vested in this city and people that look like us too to be able to have an opportunity um, because that's what it all comes down to. If you aren't presented with the opportunity, then how can you make the leap? And so I just appreciate you all. I thank you so much. And this has been a wonderful meeting. So have a wonderful weekend. Don't do anything I wouldn't do or do everything I would do. I don't know. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>